A crack in the Pacific seafloor has caused volcanic chain to become dormant. This is by Lori Fickman, University of Houston on FIS.org. From his geology lab at the University of Houston, Johnny Wu discovered that a chain of volcanoes stretching between Northeast Asia and Russia began a period of silence about 50 million years ago. And that lasted for 10 million years. Now, as we know, we have the ring of fire stretching all the way from Kamchatka, the Aleutian Islands, through Alaska, West Coast of Canada, West Coast of the United States, all the way down through the uh, west coast of, the, uh, of Latin America, South America, all across to Australia and up to the Philippines, Indonesia, Japan, back again, North Asia to Kamchatka of Russia. And all of that is a volcanic area and very earthquake prone as we know. So Johnny Wu discovered the chain of volcanoes stretching between Northeast Asia and Russia, began a period of silence 50 million years ago, lasting 10 million years, and uh, he, as a professor of structural geology, tectonics, and mantle structure, reported that one of the most significant plate tectonic shifts that took place in the Pacific Ocean had forced these volcanoes to become dormant. At the end of the Cretaceous period, that was a little bit after the dinosaurs disappeared around 66 million years ago, the Pacific Plate the largest tectonic plate on Earth, as we know, in the middle of it lies Hawaii in the mantle plume there. The Pacific Plate mysteriously changed its direct direction. One possible result, he says, was the formation of a prominent bend in the Hawaii Islands chain. A bend in that chain. And another, just discovered by Wu, was the volcanic dormancy along a 900-mile stretch that was between Japan and the remote Shikhote Alin mountain range in Russia in what is known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Of course, where we know most of, of our, the Earth's volcanoes are located. He says, around the time of the volcano dormancy, a crack in the Pacific Ocean Plate subducted or went below the volcanic margin. The thin, jagged crack in the seafloor was formed by plates moving in opposite directions, and when they subduct, they tend to affect volcanic chains. This is what Wu explained. When the volcanoes revived 10 million years later, the radiogenic isotopes with the magma within the magma were noticeably totally different. He said the productivity of magma within the once violent chain of volcanoes was only a third its previous level. This is what Lu sa Wu says, who is the, has linked the phenomenon to the subduction of the Pacific Isangani Mid-Ocean Ridge Underwater Mountain. Scientists long understood that volcanic activity above subduction zones has going on, where tectonic plates converge towards and dive underneath another, is driven by water being deep within the earth by the diving subducting plate. And when the water reaches depths of about 65 miles, it causes a solid mantle to partially melt, producing magma that may rise and feed volcanoes. He says, however, in the case of the East Asian volcanoes, subduction of the immense seafloor crack interrupted its water-laden conveyor belt into the deep uh, earth. And as a result, the volcanoes basically turned off, is what Wu explains. They went dormant, in other words. Wu and University of Houston uh, doctoral student Jeremy Tsung Jai Wu, who is not related to Johnny Wu, discovered the dormancy and the reason for it after examining a magmatic catalog of 900 igneous rock radioisotopic values from the Cretaceous and Miocene eras. They also found evidence that the crack in the Pacific Plate was about 50% shorter than originally believed.
This is uh, by Jeremy Chuang Ju Wu et al. Izanagi Pacific Ridge subduction. About 56 to 46 million years ago, a magmatic gap along the Northeast Asian margin. And it was published on geology. This is provided by the University of Houston on phys.org. But let's take a look at Google Earth to see what that crack is doing uh, as it's going from that area towards Hawaii. Okay, here we are on, Google, on um, sorry, San Jose Berkeley. Uh, this is Hawaii here, as we see, is totally, of course, active every single day. The latest one being 2.2 Pahala, deep. That's along the uh, plume. That's deep between the plume and the volcano, the magma chamber, the plume, and the uh, uh, crater. So that's pretty deep, as we see, always deep for some reason there. And here, this is the area that we're talking about, Russia, Kamchatka, Kamchatka Peninsula. All of this, is, of course, is a volcanic area. The Aleutian Islands, the North Asian area of the volcanoes that they're talking about. And um, this is, sorry, this is where our, there we go, the, this area here, okay, this area here, is where the new super volcano has been found right there uh, that is twice as big as Yellowstone and we'll go look at that on Google Earth we can even see it now okay this is the crack that he was talking about very unusual you can even see the lines there and let's go to Google Earth here we are okay my pin has come off my pin has come off it looks like from the Philippine volcano, okay, um, on Bellum uh, Rise. And this is it, this is our crack. About 65 million years ago. And I would venture to say, look, you know, our Earth is not that big. When you take a, when you take a look at the, um, for example, one example being what happened here in Hudson Bay, that was formed about 12,800 years ago by an, uh, an interest, well, uh, by a comet, a comet strike. They first thought that was uh, only North America, then they found that it was the whole of the Northern Hemisphere, then they found that that comet was broken up into at least seven pieces and that the uh, uh, strike events were worldwide. They found soot all over uh, North America because everything had burned up here. Everything was burned up, and the Clovis culture of the native people um, basically went uh, extinct. And um, this is the area of the this is the area of the dinosaur Mexico Yucatan Peninsula asteroid strike, and uh, that is underwater now. But they found the the, the evidence of it from minerals. And, you know, that's not that far off. I mean, if, if something struck here, it's not that, I mean, it's uh, like a bulging type of uh, pressure. It's not unfeasible that it would cause a, a crack here at that time because of that asteroid strike causing this to crack. Can you imagine what went on? Havoc. Okay, so that's the area that they're talking about. And Hawaii is in the middle of the plate. This is all one plate. It's cracked right there. And it's also, there's also a crack or a trench type of thing right here. That's it right there. That must be the crack. This is a trail of uh, volcanic, okay. This is, that must be the crack right there. Okay. And this is the ring of fire, as we can see. This is all the ring of fire. It's all one plate. That's it right there. Volcanic islands. Volcanic islands right there. This is the video before this one talks about the uh, earthquake swarms being, this is where they took the results from. All these are volcanic islands, including Guam up there. Earthquake swarms revealing the missing pieces of tectonic plates and volcano puzzle. 
um, how the subduction causes earthquake swarms in the mantle plume. And uh, even here we have in Pahala that we saw the Pahala earthquakes in the mantle plume between the magma chamber and the crater floor right there. That's, that's deep. Okay. So that's the crack, it looks like. This one here. Right here. It also goes this way. This way as well. You can see, look at that. It's sort of... Uh, yes, going into this area as well. Yes. Okay, so I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you for your support. Please, re please remember to ascertain if you are still sub, um, uh, subbed, because a lot of my viewers are telling me that they, even though they're subbed, they get unsubbed for some reason, and then they don't receive their videos, the updated videos. And also, um, ring the bell so you can get the latest videos if you'd like. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.